Improper partial fraction. Okay. Right. Um, let's see. Okay, so last time. Um, we were looking at proper partial fractions. So just a really quick review of some of the ideas. So what we had, for example, was something like a linear over maybe like a cubic. So the first step is to look at the factors of the cubic here. The best situation is when it has three factors then we know that the answer would be A over the first factor plus B over the second factor plus C over the third factor. It gets a little bit messier when there's only two factors. So when there's only two factors, it's A over the first factor plus B over the second factor and then there's a problem and the way we fix the problem is by squaring the factor that repeats itself. But then if you remember, there was some uncertainty about what goes up the top here. So it should be linear, but one of the coefficients will be zero in this case. And then there was a third situation here where we had just one factor. Uh, yeah, just one factor. So you had A over the first factor plus, and then we had a linear over the second factor, which was a quadratic. So that was just a little bit of revision of what we looked at last time before the break. So the key thing about these proper partial fractions is the number of roots in the denominator that tells you what you need to do with it. And like I said, the best situation is when there's three factors. Okay, so let's have a look at the topic today then. If you remember something is a proper partial fraction, if the top is lower in the power than the bottom. So for example, quadratic over cubic, linear over quadratic, linear over cubic, these are all proper. Improper partial fractions is the opposite. When the top is the same power or greater than the denominator. So first example, uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's do an example like this one here, 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 14x minus 23 <coughs> all over x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay. This one we call improper partial fraction because the top has power 3 and the bottom has power 2. So the top is a higher power than the bottom. So we say it's improper. So how do we deal with improper? Well, we can change these improper partial fractions into proper partial fractions by long division. So first we long divide. Oh, and by the way, this will not divide perfectly into this. But that's okay. That's to be expected x squared minus 4x minus 5 divided into 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 14x minus 23. So you can see the first one must be 2x. 2x 
cubed minus 8x squared minus 5, uh, sorry, 10x um, that should be square there subtracting and I get x squared and then minus 4x minus 23 yeah. So then the last one here must be just 1. So I get x squared minus 4x minus 5. So there is a remainder here. Minus 18. I think, isn't it? Okay. So there's the long division I just did. So the reason the long division is useful, if you remember from semester one, it lets us say that this cubic here is equal to this, multiply this, plus this remainder. We did this in semester one, and a quick reminder of that would be, for example, 20 into 102 goes 5 times with remainder 2. So we can say 102 is 20 multiplied 5 plus remainder 2. But we mentioned this in semester 1. Uh, so we can say now 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 14x minus 23 equals uh, equals 2x plus 1 times x squared minus 4x minus 5 minus 18 then. So that's just stuff from semester 1 really. So does that help us? Uh, should I put the line down? So what I've done is that I've taken the cubic and just written it like this, which actually turns out to be very, very useful. Because if you go back to the question, all that I'm missing now is this piece here. And the way to make it, I'll just divide everything by that. So on the left, I divide by x squared minus 4x minus 5. And on the right, I do the same thing. x squared minus 4x minus 5. This here is the question again, so I'll just write Q for question. And this here I can split into 2x plus 1 times x squared minus 4x minus 5 over x squared minus 4x minus 5, and they cancel, minus 18 over x squared minus 4x minus 5. So now I get question equals 2x plus 1 minus 18 over x squared minus 4x minus 5. And that's really the key now because you've seen what happened, or you uh, hopefully can see what happened. I've changed the problem from improper now down to proper. Now we just have to deal with this. Which we've seen how to do. So uh, what we do then, well I'll give you a minute. Okay, so what's happened is now we have this problem to look at instead. 
So on the side we'll deal with that problem. Let me just write it down again. 18 over x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay. Um, this is 18 over x minus 5, x plus 1. So this is 18 over x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals a over x minus 5 plus b over x plus 1. Multiplying everything by these two factors, x minus 5, x plus 1, x minus 5, x plus 1, x minus 5, x plus 1, they cancel with that, that cancels with that, and then that one will cancel with that. So you end up with 18 equals a, x plus 1, plus b, x minus 5. Then we do our trick. If this is true for all values of x, it's true for any value you pick. So we say let x equal minus 1. So you get 18 equals b times minus 6. So then b is equal to minus 3. And then we say let x equal to 5. So then you get 18 equal to 6 to be uh, 18 equal to 6b uh, sorry 6a thank you 6a so then a equal to 3 so now you have your a and your b you can say that this one sec equals 3 over x minus 5 my, uh, well plus minus so minus 3 over x plus 1 yes one sec yeah <coughs> minus 18. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, wait, minus 18? Yeah, the remainder is minus 18. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just put the minus in um, when I sub it back in. So if you want, just think of it as brackets around that. Okay, so once you write that down, we'll go back down to the main part of the question. Okay, so going back to the left now, 3 over x minus 5, and then, okay. So this is equal to 2x plus 1 minus 3 over x minus 5 plus 3 over, oh sorry, it was minus, wasn't it? minus 3 over x plus 1. So we get our answer. There you go. So what we've done is we've changed our um, improper partial fraction into these three terms now. Uh, thank you. Plus here. Notice there's only a small difference with our answer compared to our last class. The only difference when we have improper partial fractions is you get this linear piece here. Which you can think about as being like over 1 if you want. So we've changed it into uh, three simpler fractions. Okay, we'll have a look at a more difficult example now. So that's just one to get us started. So let's pick something tricky. That's my battery doing. 
Oh, dear, I Right. Let's have a look at a trick here. Can I scroll down? Yeah. Okay, let's say we have 21 x power 4 <coughs> plus 99 x cubed plus 134 x squared plus 91 x plus 23 over 21 x cubed plus 57x squared plus 79x plus Okay, so our first step here is just like with the last one, we should divide first. So 21x cubed plus 57x squared plus 79x plus 35 divided into 21x power 4 plus 99x cubed plus 134x squared plus 91x plus 20 plus 23 yeah ok so first one here should be x and we get 21x power 4 plus 57x cubed plus 79x squared plus 35x I subtract and I'm left with uh, 42x cubed plus what's that 21 40, 60, 65 55x squared plus 56 x plus 23. Okay, so then here I must put 2. 42x cubed plus 114x squared uh, plus 158 yeah, plus 70. And I subtract. They're gone. So that's 45, 50. Fif minus 59x squared minus 102 minus 47 okay so this one already looks a bit more difficult because the remainder isn't just a number but in fact that doesn't make it too much more difficult it's a quadratic here so we can still say 21 x power 4 plus 99 x cubed plus 134 x squared plus 91 x plus 23 equals x plus 2 multiply 21x cubed plus 57x squared 
plus 79x plus 35. And then we have to add on the remainder. Uh, so I need to go to the right, but this here is just what was inside the long division here. So if I just scroll to the left, minus, now I think I'll take the minus out and just write it as 59x squared. Okay. There we go. Yeah, it should be. I don't know. It's too early after the break. Uh, it should be plus here and plus here. Okay. So what we'll do next is we'll divide everything by this cubic here. Just writing the same cubic out. So what's great is that it will cancel here and here. <coughs> and now what you have back here, this is actually the question again. So now we have question, the original question equals x plus 2 minus 59x squared plus 102x plus 47 over 21x cubed plus 57x squared plus 79x plus 35. So we've seen what's happened again is we've changed the pro problem from an improper to proper partial fraction. So what I'll do now is on the side, I'll look at this problem. Okay, can I scroll to the side? Okay, so to the side now. So let me just write the question down again. 59x squared plus 102x plus 47 over 21x cubed plus 57x squared plus 79x plus 35. Okay. And um, so we can just use our calculator here. What are the three factors? For that cubic. 7x plus 5. 7x plus 5. Ah, good. So the next term has an i in it, does it? So there's only actually one. There's only one here. And the next piece, we don't know what it is. But at least we know it's a quadratic, but we don't know what it is. 
So now we have to look at, um, oops, draw that again. Now we're trying to find the factors here. Now the good thing is we already have one. We got that one from our calculator. So the way to get the other factors, or in this case the other factor, because it's just a quadratic that we're missing, is with long division again. So we have to do another long division. 7x plus 5 divided into 21x cubed plus 57x squared plus 79x plus 35. Uh, so that would have to be 3x squared, 21x cubed plus 15x squared, 42x squared plus 79x plus 35. So what's that? 6, isn't it? Forty two x squared plus thirty x. Yeah? So then the last one here has to be seven. Um perfect, which is what you want as zero remainder, because it is a factor. So we found our quadratic. Here it is right here. So that's our quadratic. So I'll just remove this whoops. Uh, I'll just remove this word here and write in our quadratic. Three x squared plus six x plus seven. Okay. Um, so now we have fifty nine x squared plus a hundred and two x plus forty seven over twenty one x cubed plus fifty seven x squared plus seventy nine x plus thirty five equals a over 7x plus 5 plus bx plus c over 3x squared plus 6x plus 7. And remember what we're saying is the numerator must be one power lower than the denominator. And in situations where this denominator is a square, then we think one of these should be zero, but that's not the situation here. So it's just like this. Still a little bit bright on the screen. So we multiply everything by 7x plus 5 and 3x squared plus 6x plus 7. So we have our 2 here, our 2 here, and our 2 here. So this will cancel all of this as normal. This one will cancel this one, and then the second one here is cancelling this one here. So now we end up with... 59x squared plus 102x plus 47 equals a 3x squared plus 6x plus 7 plus bx plus c 7x plus 5. Now, when I look at this, I can see it's not so 
easy, I think, to find the A, B, and C by picking the X. I can make X equals minus 5 over 7. We'll cancel that. Um, so I think what I'll do for this one is, I think I'll do it the other method by expanding this and then comparing the left and the right. So we get 59x squared plus 102x plus 47 equals 3ax squared plus 6ax plus 7a plus 7bx squared plus, and then this would be 5b plus 7c x plus 5c. Yeah. So I have 59x squared plus 102x plus 47 equals 3a plus 7b x squared plus 6a plus 5b plus 7c x. So I did the x squared here and here. I did the x here, here and here. So I just have 7a plus 5c then. Okay, so just like last time, that one should equal 59. That one should equal 102. That one should equal 47. So I have 3a plus 7b equals 59. I have 6a plus 5b plus 7c equals 102. Then I have 7a plus 5c equals 47. Okay, so we need to make a choice. Uh, we need to solve this. So what I'll do is, um, you could see here and here, I could remove C. That would leave me with just A and B. And the first one has only A and B in it as well. Yep. No, it's okay. Yes, if you see a small mistake, now would be a good time to point it out. So I think the best way to remove C is what I'll do is multiply this one by 5 and multiply this one by 7. So I have 3A plus 7B equals 59. 30A, uh, no, yes, 30A plus 25B plus 35C equals 510. 49A plus 35C, uh, 47 times 7 is uh, 318, is it? 29. 329. Okay, so if I minus the bottom two, but keep the first one, that would be 19A. 35C minus 35C is gone, minus 25B. Okay, and what's 329 minus 510? I'm doing the second minus the top. What is it? 191? 181? Okay. So now I have this and this. Okay, so if I write underneath 3a minus 7b equals 59. Where is the plus? Oh, thank you. Okay, so let's see. Um, 
I don't think there's going to be any small number here. It's going to have to be a large one, isn't it? Multiply this by 7 and multiply this by 25. All right, 19 times 7. What's that? 5, 6, 7. Um, oh, what is it? 133. A minus 175. B equals 1, 2, 6, 7. Okay, 75A minus, no, plus 175B equals 1475. Okay, now we subtract. Oh, sorry, now we add. There you go. 218A equals, so I'm adding these together. Oh, here? Oh yeah, 208. And this one? Two oh eight. So that's very nice. A equals one. Now let's see everything else fall into place. So now I can get the B. Three plus seven B equals fifty-nine. So seven B equals um fifty-six. So fifty-six divided by seven, is it? So we get B equals 8. Now what has A, B and C in it? Um, 7A plus 5C equals 47. 7A plus 5C equals 47, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, A is 1. So that would be 8, is it, for C? One eight eight. Okay, so now this is where we go all the way down to get this A, B, and C, and then it collapses all the way back because now we can start going backwards. So we've managed to find our A, B and C so now we return back to where we start. So we go back up, we have A, B, C, 1, 8, 8 so I can go back to here. I know A, B and C, I know this is 1, 8, 8. So this now is 1, 8 and 8 here. Then I can go back to the side, because remember this problem was for here. Um, so that was, let's see, 1 over 7x plus 5, 8x plus 8 over 3x squared plus 6x plus 7. So firstly 1 over 7x plus 5, so that's 1 over 7x plus 5. And then the other one is 8x plus 8 over 3x squared plus 6x plus 7. So now we're back to the question. So we get question equals x plus 2 minus 1 over 7x plus 5 minus 8 plus 8x over 3x squared plus 6x plus 7.
So you see the difficulty with this question is number one, it's very long. Number two, it has lots of sub problems inside of other problems. So you see this here had a side problem, then the side problem had another long division, and then within that we also had to solve these three equations with A, B, and C in it. This is quite a long problem. Anyways, what was the what is the purpose of changing our improper into this anyways? Which I might have said the last time, but if not, I'll say it again anyways. If I asked you to integrate this, that would be impossibly difficult for you to do. You just couldn't do it. It'd just be way too difficult. But instead, if I asked you to integrate this, well this is easy, this is easy. This is in the table book, so that's easy. And this can be done with a substitution, u equal to 3x squared plus 6x plus 7. So the reason that this lesson is in the chapter on integration is because we're preparing skills which we'll need for the next lesson, which is integrating these proper and improper partial fractions. Um, this question comes up on the exam every year in section B. I don't think I have an exam paper where it doesn't come up. So, like this, with integration as well. So, whole question. Yes. See, this is see, this is the this is the advantage as well of this question. It would really be a this would be nearly a full section B question. You know, part A of the question would be find A B C, and then part B of the question would be to integrate. So this here, although it's very long, um, what I did with the integration would represent maybe 10 marks in the exam, which is 10% of the exam. So I don't know, I mean, disadvantage is long, advantage is only one question, okay, and um, another advantage is, you know, they are similar, they're just long, but at least they're similar each year, okay, so with practice, um, you might find that this is one you choose to do in the exam. Okay, so the best thing you can do is practice these. Now there's a few minutes left, so there should be enough time to get one of the easier ones done, like near the start. So if you can do these for a few minutes. Uh.